Hello, everybody, and welcome to Hope Unabridged, a brand new filmed podcast. We are so glad that you're here today. My name is Angie Elkins. I'm Casey Brennan. And we are excited to have a great conversation about our unedited stories and things that happen in our lives. This is going to be an honest conversation, yes. <laughs> talking about all the things. So um, I thought we would take a few minutes just to introduce ourselves. So I'm Angie Elkins, and you are? I'm Casey Brennan. Tell me all about you, Casey. Oh, man. I have um, three children, ages seven, five, and three. Yeah. Um, my husband and I have been married for almost 13 years, so we're That's almost great. teenagers. That's great. I love um, it. But yeah, I'm a producer... Enneagram, Enneagram coach and uh, yeah. now podcast. And now podcaster. And now podcast, yes. That's right. You're also a singer. <laughs> I am. I'm a singer as well. Yes. <laughs> I love it. What about um, you? So I am a mom of three and mine are all teenagers for a little bit longer. So I have a 19 year old who's a freshman in college. I have a 17 year old who's a senior in high school and a 15 year old who is a sophomore in high school. They all just started back. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah it's kind of crazy. Mm-hmm. It's kind of crazy. But yeah, I'm a podcaster, an editor. I do a lot of things too, a singer, mm-hmm. you know, all of those things. And so we kind of brought our gifts to the table here yes. to have a great conversation. Mm-hmm. So today we are going to be talking to you about anxiety because we know that a lot of you are experiencing a difficult time right now as you are making decisions about school and going back to school. Mm -hmm. Some of you have already made them. We've already made them. And it may change. (laughs) I don't know. But we still have anxiety to manage, Mm -hmm. right? And so we have brought an expert in. Yes. Tell us about our expert. Yes, Brenda Stewart. She is a mental health counselor here in Orlando, Florida. And I call her our anxiety expert. And she's (laughs) going to share with us some some tips on how to manage our our school year with mm-hmm. our children um, and also their own anxieties, which is important. So, yes, super important. Welcome, Brenda. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. It's a privilege. Yeah, we are so glad you're here. So we are just thrilled that we have you right here because we we got some anxiety. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I can help you with that today. <laughs> I hope you can. Um, so tell me kind of what are you seeing as some of the most common causes of anxiety this season related to back to school for parents and students? Mm-hmm. I think the one word that I can categorize it in best is the unknown. Mm-hmm. The anxiety just feeds on unknown. And there's so many unknowns right now with schools and what's going to happen and how they're doing schools and how your children are going to adjust as parents there's not a known necessarily structure it's all new mm-hmm. yeah so that's one of the biggest triggers for anxiety right now is the unknown sure. and the health concern yeah. yeah yeah that's a big one do you think mm-hmm. um we are so afraid of the unknown because we can't control it like does it boil down to a control issue a lot of times, yes, yeah. mm-hmm. because we are a people who want to know, have structure, have some sort of control because that allows for a sense of safety. Mm-hmm. And so finding their safety, their security, their stability, and part of that is in things that are known, yeah. right? And so right now when all of that is up in the air, it can be very challenging. Sure. Yeah. You know, I know there's a lot of shame sometimes connected to anxiety we know we shouldn't feel that way that's that's the process that goes in my head I shouldn't feel this way you know is anxiety a bad thing well I think as Christians um you know you hear the verse be anxious for nothing mm-hmm. and then everything right. gives thanks and so we have that kind of command in scripture and so then if we feel anxious what are we doing wrong? Something's wrong. I shouldn't be feeling this way. And we start to really cast a lot of judgment. Mm -hmm. I always look at that word should Mm. It's a flag that there's judgment there. Yeah. And so if we step back a moment from the judgment and the shame around it and realize, you know, yes, ideally we're not anxious because we're trusting in God, trusting in the Lord Mm -hmm. and his sovereignty and his care for us and all of that. And also, we're humans. Yeah. yeah. We have a fallen nature. So we are going to have struggles this side of heaven. And so rather than looking at it as a good or bad, it let's be curious about this. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's good. So what are some questions we can ask? Like as we, as we stop and say, 
I'm definitely feeling anxious. When you say, let's be curious, like, tell me what that looks like practically. Sure. That's a great question because it can be a little bit vague, right? Let's be just be curious, right? I was telling one of my child clients on Monday that we're going to be curious, George, together. Oh, I love it. <laughs> we're going to be investigators. Yeah. And so part of it is let's understand the function of the anxiety and what it's really about because okay. anxiety can feel so overwhelming and feel so kind of all encompassing that if we can slow down for a moment, Mm -hmm. which is hard to do in the moment of anxiety, right? Um, Depending on the level of anxiety felt, but slow down and just really begin to ask questions. One of the ways that I like to do that practically, um, and I encourage clients to as well, is let's separate from it for a moment. Mm -hmm. So let's put the anxiety in a chair. You can have an object that resembles anxiety or just write the word anxiety on a piece of paper. Set it in a chair and realize that the anxiety is a part of us that we're feeling, but it doesn't have to consume us all the way. So set it in a chair and just start to ask, okay, you're really loud right now. What do you want me to know? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to communicate to me? Mm, That's good. A lot of times anxiety, the function of it is there's a real or a perceived threat to somebody's safety or relationship or something like that. And so Typically, anxiety is there trying to protect us, to help us, right? What if this happens? What if your kids get sick? What if school shuts down? Then what am I going to do? And I still have to work. And (laughs) (laughs) it goes rapid. And so slowing it down and understanding specifically what it is there for is step one, I would say. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I love that visual of just putting it in a box. I, I do that. I have to do that a lot of times. And sometimes in... And I'll go out and say, it's sometimes unhealthy for me to do that because I'll throw it in a box and I'm like, okay, you're just going to stay right there. I'm going to tuck you under the bed for a minute and I'm not going to look at you again or talk to you. And then, and then I don't come back around Mm -hmm. to it. And so then something, something other like that week big will happen. And then it's like a layered effect. Mm -hmm. Can you talk to that a little bit? Yeah. So there's something that I call containment, Mm -hmm. which it sounds like when you put it in the box, that's what you're trying to do, right? I don't have time and space right now to address the anxiety, so I'm going to set it over here, Mm -hmm. which can be a great coping skill for a short period of time, Um, where the downfall in that is if it turns to avoidance, Mm -hmm. yeah, right? Because if we contain it over here for a time and never go back to it, then we're just stuffing it, we're kind of turning a blind eye, we're avoiding it, and then it just builds and builds and builds. Yeah. Yeah. What about when we start to see some some signals in our chil- children? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about what does that look like in children? And then sure. what's the best way as parents to kind of guide them um, and help them through anxiety? The biggest thing is as adults and as parents recognizing when we're anxious mm-hmm. and what our signs and symptoms are, right? Our body communicates a ton to us if we listen to it. And so some symptoms of anxiety adults experience would be shallow breathing or fast breathing, tense muscles, mm-hmm. a clenched jaw, mm-hmm. sometimes kind of stomach nausea or yeah. butterflies. Yeah. Sometimes people get headaches, um, the racing thought. Mm-hmm. Children can get some of those things, but it can also look very different. And so with children, we see uh, maybe higher irritability, mm. a difficulty concentrating more so than their mm-hmm. norm. Mm-hmm. Um, they might get angry easier. Mm-hmm. They'll have a lot of physical complaints, a lot of stomach aches, typically. Um, yeah. We might notice kind of more fidgeting, uh, fidgeting behavior, more clinging behavior. They might want to be with you all the time. Or mm-hmm. they might notice avoidance, like they start to isolate. They kind of aren't interested in things they used to be. Yeah, Could all be symptoms of anxiety. And one Additional one that I want to point out is if you notice them having a lot of self-critical thoughts, okay, mm. right, or even oh I didn't do well on that test and I should have done better or I, you know, can't believe this happened. That can be a little yellow flag as a parent to say, okay, what's going on here? Yeah. So when we start to see those things, mm-hmm. what's what can we do? Because honestly, that's my reaction to anxiety when I when I feel something is like a jar or 
I fix, Mm -hmm. you know, I immediately go to, what can I do? Mm -hmm. (laughs) So (laughs) yeah. 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 So how can I help my kids? I mean, that's Mm -hmm. really what I want to know. Yeah. I think that word be curious again, right? Mm -hmm. First is to be able to handle your own anxiety so that you can model it for your kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So as they see you, you know, I'm feeling a little bit stressed out or I'm feeling a little anxious right now. So mommy's going to, you know, have some hot tea and I'm going to do some breathing. You want to breathe with me? Right. So it dispels some judgment or shame around that. And it's just Mm -hmm. where we're at and this is how we cope with it. So being able to handle it yourself is key. And then when you notice it in your kids, you can have kind of a tool, tool from your toolbox Mm -hmm. to help them and to really be curious. Hey, I noticed you're being really antsy today. What's going Mm -hmm. on? What are you thinking? What are you feeling in your body? Yeah. You know, and then kids will usually be able to tell you something. And it's going to look different. They may say something and then be like, okay, can I go play now? You know, <laughs> it might not be a long discussion. Yeah. Um, but knowing that they're safe with you and knowing that you see and are tuning in to those things in their life and just having that open space for communication is important. So I have one of my children struggles with anxiety Mm -hmm. and it really took me as a mom a long time to kind of wrap my brain around it. Um, I tend to be more of a, oh, you're fine. You're Mm -hmm. fine. You know, shake it off. You're fine. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that anxiety often is not rational, you know, Mm -hmm. there's no there's no rhyme and reason to it. Sometimes mm-hmm. it, it kind of helped me be a little more sympathetic. So what would you say to parents who have anxious kids, um, about just how to accept, maybe be more patient with mm-hmm. them and give them the environment they need to deal with their anxiety? Sure. It can be really difficult if as a mom, you're not wired that way. Yeah. Cause it's hard <laughs> to understand, right? Yeah. It's like, Very. Okay, that doesn't make any sense logically. Right. And so we have to remember that for kids, first of all, they don't have the same cognitive brain formation yet that we do as adults. And so what impacts them is very different than it does as an adult. And so looking at it from, you know, even if I don't understand that anxiety or why they're thinking that way, it makes sense in their brain for some reason. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's a valid even though I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And so looking at it as, you know, there are biological components of anxiety. Yeah. Just like the people who are diabetic, right? They didn't do anything to cause it. Right. It's just part of their story. And sometimes there's a biological or genetic wiring toward anxiety. Mm-hmm. That with life experiences, personality style, um, any trauma someone's experienced can all impact how we view and experience the world. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, one student might be really anxious about the potential of getting COVID at school, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that probably makes sense to all of us right now. But if as a mom, it's like, why are you worried about that? The chances of that happening are so minimal, et cetera. It can be really difficult. So I think that really understanding from their point of view, Mm -hmm. So can I put myself in their shoes for a moment, knowing my child, knowing how they're wired and what is it that I'm curious about? So Mm -hmm. what are your thoughts? Like, let's be specific about anxiety because anxiety can be so vague. A lot of times I'm just anxious. I'm just anxious. Okay. Mm -hmm. About what specifically? What is it that you're fearful of? Mm -hmm. And then we can address that because then Mm -hmm. there's something known. So let's talk about a little more serious version of anxiety. When someone, how do you know if you or someone is having an anxiety attack? Uh, Great question. So Mm -hmm. an anxiety attack looks more intense symptoms over a quick period of time. Okay. So it might be somebody is really having a hard time breathing. They're having chest pain. They might feel like they can't sit still, fidgeting. Um, They might feel like, you might hear someone say, I feel like I'm going to go crazy or yeah. um, not able to get enough breath, sweating, okay. face flushed. Um, it looks different for everybody, but typically if, you know, somebody's anxiety level is 
necessarily high as their baseline. Yeah. And if you see something spike rather quickly and they have a hard time coming back down, that's usually an anxiety attack. Mm-hmm. They don't last super long. Um, mm-hmm. So it's pretty quick and short lived. Yeah. And how do we, how are we able to, I mean, because I've been around people that have had anxiety attacks and you would never know it. So, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? They, they just mask it very well. Um, mm-hmm. How can we be helpful in those situations and if we don't recognize it? Like, what are, what are some ways that we can do and that we can help? Yeah, so I'm glad you brought that up because sometimes anxiety is external. Mm-hmm. And sometimes people experience anxiety internal and freeze, right? They might get really still mm-hmm. or you might notice them bracing or their kind of facial expressions change. And so one of the quickest things to do is help with grounding. So anxiety lives in the past or in the future. Mm. And so typically in an anxiety attack, the person is not present in the moment right now. So anything you can do that brings them to the present. Mm -hmm. I like to use the five senses. So say the name. Hey, Joey, I want you to name something in this room room that's red. Mm -hmm. Okay, Now find something that's green. Mm -hmm. Now I want you to tell me everything that you can hear. Listen very carefully. Right. And it's bringing them back into the moment. Mm -hmm. Um, another big thing is a temperature change. I don't know if you're familiar with the dive reflex. No. You're a scuba diver. I'm not either. So I just (laughs) learned about it. But, um, when you go scuba diving, the deeper you go, your body goes into preservation, Mm -hmm. right? So your heart rate slows down, your temperature decreases, your blood pressure decreases. Mm -hmm. Well, what we know with anxiety is that all of those things escalate. So, your heart rate skyrockets, your breathing is fast and shallow, your blood pressure increases. And so one way to shift that and actually biologically adjust is to lower your body temperature. So you can squeeze ice cubes. Um, That can shift. You can also, sometimes people fill their sink with water or you can get those eye masks that you put in the freezer. Yeah, the cooling ones. I love those. Yes, (laughs) stick them in the freezer and then take take one out or put your face in water and hold your breath for 30, well, 30 seconds if you can, otherwise breathe, (laughs) Um, but hold your breath. And then when you come out, take some deep breaths and your body will naturally start to calm down. Wow. Because it will slow your heart rate, your body temperature. Yeah, you can look at dive reflex on YouTube, and it'll show you an example. Yeah, absolutely. Such a practical thing. I love that. Totally, I love that. I never knew that Mm -hmm. about body temperature. That's cool. So we talked a little bit earlier about the shame Mm -hmm. around uh, anxiety, and I know, especially in Christian circles, it tends to be one of those taboo subjects or things that people hide. They Mm -hmm. they don't want people to know that they're anxious. So tell me why that is the way it is. And then, but I know that there is a flip side to that and our faith can help us manage Mm -hmm. our anxiety. So let's talk a little bit about that. Sure. Yeah, I think, you know, when we have shame, it just feeds the anxiety, Mm -hmm. doesn't it? Because then you're nervous about what other people are going to think and you're nervous about, ah, do I say this? Do I not say this? (laughs) And then you start having to just feel like you're hiding and shame just, breeds more anxiety. Yeah. So I think what you both are doing in this podcast and having real life conversations, honestly, is a huge need Mm -hmm. and something that can just say, let's just put it out there. This is something that even as Christians, we deal with. Mm -hmm. Right. And so what are ways that we can really work towards overcoming it? We don't have to be a slave to anxiety. Mm -hmm. What ways can we really, and it takes a lot of hard work especially if you have a biological component, right? Yeah. yeah. And so really addressing the anxiety and then also saying, okay, as a person of faith, as a Christian, where really is my anchor? Mm-hmm. What really am I trusting in? Right? Because if it's up to us to have control and know everything, that's not going to last very long or go very no. far. Yeah. Right? But if we can, can use our faith as really the primary foundation of how to handle anxiety, Mm-hmm. it makes a big difference. Yeah. If I anchor myself, okay, I need to spend some time in the word. Mm-hmm. I need to cry out to God, like, God, come near. Mm-hmm. Just tell me that you're here yeah. in some way. It just helps our perspective switch to, oh, there's there's something bigger than me here. 
Yeah, that's that good. is in control. That's sovereign, sovereign that cares about my children more than I even do, which is hard to imagine. Yeah. yeah. And you've shared so many amazing tips. Can you just run down like five takeaways that we can just go into our day and know that these are some five tools that we can walk away from managing our anxiety? Sure. Absolutely. Um, I'll try to use, do some ones that are more in the moment that you can take anywhere and then some that'll maybe require a little bit more intentional effort. Um, but since you are both singers, I think <laughs> number one is sing. Yeah. Sing. Right? Yeah. Sing, singing <laughs> has been researched and chose to release endorphins. Mm -hmm. It increases mood and it decreases mm -hmm. stress. So if you yeah. like to sing, just break out into song. Yeah, <laughs> that's great. That can be yes. one that people can do. Um, another one is to really do deep breathing. Mm -hmm. That will will down regulate your anxiety if done appropriately. So mm -hmm. what you want to do is breathe through your diaphragm, not through your chest. Mm -hmm. So if you were to put one hand on your chest and one on your, your stomach, you want your stomach to inflate, not your mm -hmm. yeah. And so you want to take a deep breath in. Hold it and then blow it out your mouth. And so, so relaxing. It does help. Yeah. <laughs> so if you do that like three or four times, it will begin to shift your body um, towards relaxation. So you can do breathing everywhere. Mm -hmm. um, another one is use your five senses that we talked about before. So you come back to the moment mm -hmm. and, you know, you're in this present moment. God promises us the strength for today. Yeah, right? we're not in tomorrow yet, so we don't need to look at tomorrow's worries or yesterday's struggles. Mm -hmm. So let's just do today and be faithful what we have today. Yeah, um, the containment box is a great thing for adults and kids mm -hmm. to use and to practice, um, as long as you don't use it for avoidance. Yeah. Right, then come back <laughs> at another time, and you know, as adults, take it to a therapist if you have one. Journal mm -hmm. about it. Um, pray about those things. Um, with your kids, you can go through it together and, you know, help them walk through it. Another one for, for anxiety, a key component is really to challenge your thoughts, mm. right? Our anxious thoughts can go rampant mm. and they're not always based in truth. Yeah. And so, you know, take kind of wrestling it to the mat. So if an anxious thought is, I don't know if I can do this today. I don't know if I can make it with my son at kindergarten. I can't walk him in. Right. Yeah. Okay. Well, what will happen if you can't walk him in? I don't know. Maybe he's going to get lost. And what happens if that's the case, right? Kind of yeah. really get specific. Okay. And at the end of the day, God is always faithful. Mm -hmm. Like he will be there. And yes. so challenging the thoughts and coming back to truth, right? If someone says, nobody ever likes me, nobody ever. Or mm -hmm. tell me one time when someone did like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So really challenging some of our, the ways that we think that can be thinking errors. Yeah, that's great. Um, I love that. It's key. And then I would just say ensuring that you have adequate rest, mm -hmm. adequate nutrition, and being out in nature, mm -hmm. um, moving your body, right? Yes. Walking, stretching, mm -hmm. um, Anxiety is a buildup of energy in our body, mm -hmm. right? We feel that kind of anxious energy or the tension. And so how can we release it mm, Yeah, in yeah. different ways? One of the things that the kids and I do when, the, when it is just when I need it and when they need it and it's obvious that they need it, I just throw on some music and yes. we have a living room dance party and <laughs> it's awesome. That. And by the end, we all forgot what we were upset about. Yeah. Absolutely. And I've been loving my morning walks, mm -hmm. you know, getting up and getting out early. And it's just, it's, I can feel the vitamin D, you know, <laughs> coming in. And it just makes me feel so much better when I can get yeah. out in the morning and do that and start moving. Yeah. So yeah, I, I totally agree. So one more tip I want to ask you about, because when we are sending our kids away from us and they are not with us and we can't sit with them and say, let's take a deep breath mm -hmm. or can you give me a tip for my kids? Is there something I can like write on their hand or send them a little something to school that they can hold or like, what can I do when I'm not yes. with them? Yes. I love that. Um, kids need sometimes tangible, practical things for in the moment. Yeah. And so as a mom, and depending on the age of your kids, if your kids are in elementary school, it's going to look different than high school, right? They might yeah. not want 
not want a note from their mom on their hand if they're 19 or something. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Maybe they do, but it just depends. Um, so sometimes with younger kids, it can be fun if a, a parent has a necklace, if the school allows it or a bracelet that the mom wears for a while. And then okay. the kid can take it to school. And if they feel worried, they feel connected and you can, they can hold it. Sometimes if they have a pocket, like mm-hmm. here's a stone. And I want you to keep this stone in your pocket. And mm-hmm. anytime you have a worry thought or anytime you start to feel a little bit scared, I want you to hold that stone and remember that Jesus is always with you. And that I'll be here at the end of the day to pick you up. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Or um, you can put notes in the lunchbox, mm-hmm. um, something that they can look forward to. So kind of a token item that you and your child have talked about and they know exactly what that means. That's mm-hmm. good. I love it. I love that too. Brenda, I can't thank you enough. Like you have just, I feel so much more at peace in this moment <laughs> than I did than I did at the beginning. But um, we're going to, yes, <laughs> breathe throughout the day, deep breaths and deep prayers. Absolutely. Um, yes. We, as we close up, we're going to ask all of our guests um, one final question and you're our first guest. So we get to ask you first. Yes. Um, where are you finding hope these days? Mm, that's a great question. I um, I go back to the verse in Hebrews personally that we have this hope as an anchor for the soul. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my foundational verses, even for my practice, my counseling practice, because this world is heavy, yeah. right? There is a lot of pain, a lot of distress, mm-hmm. especially this year. We've all experienced it, yeah. and so going back to the source of my hope, which is my Savior. And I anchor to him. And I, you know, before I see clients, I pray in the counseling room, asking for the Holy Spirit to be present and to give wisdom and discernment. And I, you know, just because I'm a counselor doesn't mean I don't have my own life struggle (laughs) or experiences that are difficult. And so really knowing where my strength comes from, knowing where my hope comes from, that Mm. things might not make sense this side of heaven, Mm. right? But one day all will be made right. Mm, My dad passed away a couple years ago and I don't understand it. I don't understand why or now or the timing, right? But I know that God's purpose is greater. I know that he is the master designer, even if I only see the back of the tapestry that looks like a mess, Mm -hmm. right? He sees the end result. And I know that that is good and that is the hope of what is to come for us. So I really anchor to that. Yeah, That's that. good. Mm-hmm. Brenda, before we let you go, tell our listeners and our viewers where they can connect with you. Mm-hmm. Sure. I Right now I'm at Open Doors Counseling Center in Winter Park, okay. Florida, okay. Um, doing both in-person and virtual sessions. Um, we have a website, opendoorscc.com, or you know they can reach me directly by my email, brenda at opendoorscc.com. Or by phone at 407-801-9029. Awesome. Awesome. We will link to all of that in the Mm -hmm. show notes. And so thank you so much. This has been great. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank you for having me. It's been a joy and really appreciated this opportunity. Thanks for joining us today on Hope Unabridged. We'd like to remind you, if you're watching us on Good Life 45, you can also listen to these episodes everywhere you listen to podcasts. Now, if you're listening and you'd like to see the film version of our show or any of our other shows, check us out on Good Life 45 or on our YouTube channel or our app. We hope that something you've heard today really blessed you. And we would love for you to share the show with those you love. Just hit that share button on your podcast app or on YouTube and send it to a friend. With this program, we are finding hope in the unedited stories of our lives. And we want you to do the same. 